Uh, good afternoon. So I'm Bruce. I'm the co-founder of NKN, or New Kind of Network. So today my topic is about from turbo code to blockchain innovations in telecom. So I'm actually a native uh, San Francisco Bay Area native. And also, I have been uh, very technology driven uh, in most of my career. So I would think, yeah, maybe it's good to start with a, a more technical slide. So I think uh, uh, my first quiz is, on the left-hand side, I, I'll tell you. So this is a turbo code. It's a block diagram of tur turbo code. What's the diagram on the right-hand side? Does anybody know in the audience know? So that's a block diagram for a SHA-256 crypto algorithm. So why do I connect these two together? There are a few reasons. So the first reason is more, more from a computer technology point of view, there are some similarity in the kind of mathematical and the kind of uh, point of view. So you have a little bit kind of uh, convolution, you have a little bit interleaving, you have some randomness. But more importantly, on a philosophical level, they also have some important similarities. So the turbo code is really try to make the signal rise above the sea of noise. And then cryptographers really want to make the truth rise above the sea of deceit, fake, fake news, and also other phonies. So from that point of view, there is a connection there philosophically. Now, let's go back down to Earth. And I promise this is the only one that needs a, uh, a math uh, major to understand. So the next one is, is very important about business. So the, in the uh, one way to look at if an industry is healthy enough or not, is that innovative enough, is to really look at the VC investment. So if you look at the VC investment in the, uh, in the telecom, it's actually steadily decreasing since the dot-com bubble. So if you look at this, uh, the, the blue line is the percentage. So in terms of the uh, VC investment in the telecom industry, now it's dropping less than 1% of the total VC investment. The reason is very simple. Nowadays, you only have a few uh, carriers or operators in each, each country. You have AT&T and T-Mobile in the US. And there's maybe a dozen of equipment vendors. You have the Cisco, Juniper. On the wireless side, you have Nokia, Ericsson, and uh, Huawei. So if you want to start a new business, a startup, if you go to a VC, VC said, OK, good. What's the business model? Say, oh, I want to build something in five years, spending $15 million. At the end of the day, maybe six out of the 12 people might want to buy it. So then the VC said, oh, that's not a really good business, right? It's a very long term to, to, to get the investment back. And also, the buyer market is very small. So the exit is not looking really promising. So that's the reason we see a steady decline of real innovation in the telecom industry. My founder, Yenbo, and I, are both for, for the NKN, we have been working in the telecom industry for a very long period of time. And we work on many, many different technology innovations. See, how can we really disrupt this industry? How to make everybody's connectivity better, cheaper, more fair? But after many years of struggle, we find purely innovating on the technology side does not solve the problem. That's the reason. Only by using turbo code and whatever technology we have, or even blockchain, the technology itself does not really change industry like telecom which has many, many years of uh, the kind of the ecosystem, the monopoly built in. So what we said, and also there's another, another plethora of problems with the internet today. So uh, there is the uh, network fragmentation. So lots of the users in the world cannot really access a large amount of the uh, service in the world, like a Google service or Facebook or even Twitter. And uh, the, the, the efficiency of the network utilization is very low. For example, Right now, you are in this conference center, and you might have a Spring Tour or a Verizon uh, kind of connectivity. But at a certain point, you will be very congested, very difficult, even send a picture, upload to your WeChat or Instagram. But your neighbor with a different service provider might have super fast and totally free access nobody's using. So when we talk about, oh, the uh, bandwidth is limited, uh, we don't have enough uh, speed, actually, there are lots of wasted, empty space in the whole network that's not being utilized. And, more, and there are other problems as well, like network neutrality and privacy and et cetera. So those are the problems combined with the, uh, the lack of innovation or investment in the innovation in the telecom industry. 
propose a, an opportunity as well. It's a problem, but it's an opportunity. Why we call it an opportunity? Because if you look at the three pillars of internet, you have the compute, you have the storage, and you have networking. So there are lots of interesting projects in the compute. So Ethereum want to be the decentralized computer of the world. And the storage, IPFS, want to decentralize storage and utilize everybody's free hard disk space, space uh, make it as if AWS S2. But in the networking space, it's a 1.4 trillion per year business. And we only see a few small projects focusing only on one or two small aspects. And we think that's a huge opportunity that we can address. And especially combined with technology from blockchain and the tokenized economy, I think we might have a chance, actually, to really make some real innovation in the telecommunication, networking, and internet business. So that's the reason I think this is very, very important. Um, and the, the other one is, I think if you, many of you are coming to this blockchain conference, I guess you are familiar with the tokens and different coins. So I don't know about you, so I, I check coin market cap almost every day, if not every hour. Let's see how the market is doing. So if you look at today's market, I think it's the total value is about $250 billion. And it has been shrinking quite a bit since of the, the highs of the January and the, the late last year. So one, one of the theories, if the wall of the uh, money comes from Wall Street or institutional money, then we'll flow the whole market and make it really grow. That's one theory. I would say the other theory or another practice, all of the projects we can do is, how can we move a fraction of the real world transaction onto the blockchain? Then I think can, we can fundamentally grow the business of blockchain. Just like the internet, it's not so much about particular company or infrastructure, it's really the whole economy or a large portion of the economy if it can be transacted and run on top of blockchain. Then I think we have a, really a tipping point of making this mainstream. So our contribution will be tackling the 1.4 trillion uh, internet networking business. So how, how are we going to do it? So thankfully, there's somebody quite smart figured it out the HBO Silicon Valley. So in the last five episodes of the HBO Silicon Valley, they proposed the new internet. So I think that's actually a very good way to really educate the, the mass and the, 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 the normal people what this blockchain-based system actually works and uh, why it's important. So that's fictional, but I think there are some truth in it which I think is have practical value. So what we will try to do is really can we tokenize internet bandwidth and connectivity? And then we can actually freely share and exchange those capacity among the users, between the users and service providers, and even between the service providers. Then I think we have solved two problems with this approach. First of all, you can solve any point to any point connectivity problem. Secondly, you can solve all the ways of bandwidth that are not used in one power system that can be utilized by the other people who are struggling to get even a connection. So that's what we call tokenizing the connectivity and bandwidth. And this is really a shared economy we see quite often in the Uber and the Airbnb. So the, on the very left hand side, so a normal consumer, they don't really want to do anything. So they can still kind of use the internet as today. And they can utilize the, the richer experience because more people are sharing the extra bandwidth. They don't have to do anything else. They can use the same application as before, but, you, but enjoying richer connectivity and higher bandwidth. And when you move to the middle, some of the consumer might want to become a producer of the bandwidth and connectivity as well. So the analogy will be like uh, you install a solar panel on your house. So in addition to using your PGE electricity, now you actually sell back to the grid your electricity you generate by yourself. Very similar concept. So you can actually resell or exchange part of your unused internet connectivity and bandwidth. And the last one is, if the economic model is really, really good enough, then one day some entrepreneur or company will wake up and say, oh, actually, there's lots of opportunities. I can actually invest in new infrastructure. I can put out a new Wi-Fi access points in the corner shop, or even I can put a new 
under the sea cable from Australia to US if the token economy is strong enough to support that. And then we'll see not only reusing what's a waste of bandwidth, but also we'll see a new infrastructure build out that really give us a faster, better, and fairer internet connectivity. So that's, I think, the vision we all want to have. To, to get there, to be on a very practical and technical term, there are few industry forums are working on it. For example, on the lower side, OCP is started by Facebook, an open computing pro uh, project. And then the second one, TIP, Telecom Infrastructure Project, also by founded by Facebook and some uh, telecom operators. The idea is to really open source the hardware and software and for the traditional telecom infrastructure equipment. So it'd be much cheaper and for end user to deploy. And in the middle, we call it ONF, the Open Network Foundation. They're building on the software how we can transact different data and software-defined networking. So those are the kind of open source projects in the industry that are aiming to uh, democratize the, the, uh, the equipment as well as the software for, for the future of internet. But there's one challenge. Even if this kind of open source hardware software is much cheaper than today, but you still need to give the people who deploy this uh, equipment, uh, economic incentive. So we hope blockchain and tokenization will give that additional economic boost. So in order to build this new internet, we need to have many, many people working together, different companies working together. The devices, the Android is uh, open source, so it's much easier to work with, but I, I will be very happy to get, have iOS supporting as well. We have the infrastructure, the network equipment vendors to support it, and then the carriers, both big and small ones, they, they, if they can support, and very importantly, the application developers. So today, I think the, the application need to maintain the back end, but I think with the true peer-to-peer -peer networking, you don't even have to have a front end, back end distinguishing, because everything is front end. So uh, we, I still have uh, two minutes or so, so I, give a, uh, I, I did a kind of overview what kind of innovation we think blockchain can bring to the telecom industry. So I will spend two minutes very quickly about the NKM project or the new kind of network. That's a project I'm quite one of the co-founders and we are working on. So NKM is really a new kind of network transmission and connectivity protocol and ecosystem and by tokens. So we want to make it more open, decentralized, and shared internet. So we want to be the third pillar in this kind of uh, the infrastructure layer. So we don't do storage, we don't do compute, we focus 100% entirely on the networking side. We run on top of the TCP IP routing protocol, so all your applications can be run as before, but with the additional benefits of shared connectivity. And uh, we'll have a demo session tomorrow, and, uh, and also we have a booth, so I'm not going into the technical details, what we have innovated, but on a very high level, we, we use uh, a, a core DHE-based routing protocol, so the networking can be fully meshed, so you can really solve from one point to another point connectivity issues. And we have a proof of concept, proof of relay, and to, to, to verify that you actually done the work, how people transmit your data. And then we have the, the, uh, the consensus algorithm. So many of the projects will talk about the uh, transaction per second scalability. What we're talking about, the scalability of nodes. How many nodes can reach consensus at the same time? So we believe at least millions of nodes can, can reach consensus deterministically with our algorithm, maybe even billions. That's what we are working on. So we have joint telecom infra project as well as the Open Network Foundation and the Crypto Labs. We, we believe to make it work, it has to be fully transparent. That's the reason we open source our software. We have a test net preview launch last week. And we hope all the carriers, all the service providers, equipment vendors, and users can actually experiment with it. And because our code is out there in the open. So that's our roadmap. And uh, tomorrow, we'll have a live demo. And uh, so welcome to come here tomorrow, 10, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, to sh see our demo. And also, booth will be in the main exhibition area. So, so that wraps up my uh, presentation about from blockchain to the, uh, or from uh, TurboCode to blockchain and how we can make innovation work in the telecommunication industry. So I might have half a minute or one or two questions, if there's any questions in the audience. 
we have a question? Any questions from the audience? Oh, there's one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, microphone, please. There's one in the middle. Hi there. Th thank you for the presentation. Um, that was, that's quite entertaining. I enjoyed that. Um, one, one question. Um, how, do, how do you differ a little bit from DENT? Not DENT a coin, but D-E-N-T. I, I all I know is they're both blo blockchain projects in um, telecommunications. So that might be a, a stupid question, but <laughs> I'm just curious. Right. So I can uh, kind of, I will not go into particular, compare with particular projects, but I think uh, there are a few projects in this space. Some of them are focused on the wireless side, how to share Wi-Fi or the, the, the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi access connecting. And that's one. The other one is a VPN solution. So that's a second one, like a tour, tokenized tour solution. So I think we are a little bit more on the kind of TCP IP uh, routing layer. So we, we do not really focus on only on the wireless or Wi-Fi uh, wi or a Wi-Line. So it's really a protocol that can be used uh, on different kind of access technology. That's one. The second one, lots of those projects are run on e Ethereum or ERC-20. So we believe the uh, scalability might be a challenge, because at least when we started, we haven't found any uh, public chain technology can scale to the millions of nodes or uh, billions of nodes. So uh, that's kind of, I would say, on the high level, our differentiation. Yeah. Thank you. So do you see it scaling up to past like consumer uh, mobile devices to uh, Internet of Things, like that volume? Right. Uh, can I repeat the question? Sure. So can this uh, run on consumer equipment, uh, consumer devices, as well as the kind of the core equipment? No, I'm, I'm thinking like the uh, magnitude of scale, right? So you've got the billions of phones, but you've right. got even more Internet of Things devices. Yes, correct. I can correct. see it paralleling with that. Are you thinking that scale, Internet of Things? Or? Uh, yes. So um, when we talk about millions of nodes, it's more a, a conservative approach. So we have done our simulation on billions of nodes. Our current implementation, we are quite confident at uh, this level. Uh, so in terms of human devices, that should be covered. Beyond that, uh, there are different people who have different predictions how many IoT devices will be there, right? So uh, we haven't gone into hundreds of billions or 500 billion no <laughs> nodes like uh, Cisco have been talking about. No, we haven't done that level, but we are quite confident uh, billions of nodes should be able to converge. Yeah. And even more than that, we have to find a way to either uh, work with other projects or do uh, a hierarchical or a sidechain technology to, to work on it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much to uh, Bruce Lee for a wonderful presentation. Thank you.